Hi, everyone. So I don't know that I've talked about this on here before. Um, and it seems like a weird thing for me to talk about, but I wanted to do an episode on it in case there's anybody out there that does this. And I also, it's one of those things where, can you please let me know? Because I haven't met anybody that says that they do what I'm about to talk about. Um, so... I ascribe stories to animals. I make up like all kinds of things that could be going on with like different animals depending on what they're doing and their behavior and I don't think twice about it and I usually like just assume that I'm right and what I have imagined is is going on. And before I give a couple examples, I asked my friendly chat GPD a question because do you know how useful this little thing is when Alicia's not around I ask it all kinds of questions and it tells me answers like it's fucking great like if I have a math problem I'm like what's this so I don't even have to bother with like a calculator or something like I don't know it's pretty cool but so I asked Mr. He's a mister to me, Mr. Chad GPT. Is there a term to explain why autistic adults come up with stories to explain what's going on with animals? Um, and please, like, I, I understand that <laughs> the chat GPT is not like a resource, but I did look these terms up because I heard of two of them and two of them I didn't. So I did look them up to make sure that they were real before I got on here to read off of Mr. Chat GPT. So this is what it said. The act of creating stories to explain or interpret the actions and experiences of animals or objects is related to a few psychological and literary concepts, but there isn't a single term that, dis that specifically describes this phenomenon in the context of aut autistic adults. Um, that part, I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't actually look that specific part up yet. Um, however, several relevant concepts can help us understand this behavior. So number one, anthropomorphism anthropomorphism. Sorry about that. Uh, this is the attribution of human traits, emotions, or intentions to non-human entities, including animals. It's a common way people try to understand or relate to the behaviors of animals by imagining them having human-like societies, families, and emotions. Number two, personification. Closely related to anthropomorphism, Personification is a literary device where human qualities are given to animals, objects, or ideas. It's a form of metaphor and is used in storytelling and narrative arts to bring non-human characters to life in a relatable way. The third one, narrative empathy. This term refers to the capacity of individuals to understand and feel what others are experiencing within a narrative context. By creating stories about animals, you might be exercising Narrative empathy, putting yourself in the place of the mice and imagining their lives and interactions as a family. Um, that mice thing will make sense in a little bit. And number four, creative imagination. Autistic individuals often have unique ways of processing information and can exhibit creativity in various forms. The creation of detailed stories about animals can be a manifestation of this creative imagination, offering a way to explore and understand the world through narrative. And then it ends with, while these terms don't specifically address the phenomenon among autistic adults, they highlight the blend of empathy, creativity, and narrative construction involved in the process. Creating stories about animals can be a way to make sense of their actions, attribute meaning to their existence, and engage with the world in a deeply personal and imaginative way. This behavior underscores the diversity of thought and perception that characterizes the autistic experience. Huh. How interesting is that? Um, I also should admit that part of me asked Mr. ChatGPT because I was too lazy to do actual research right now um, and like find articles and links so you can like read those. So I'm just being honest. I was too lazy to do that. So I just asked ChatGPT and then looked up some stuff to make sure it knew what it was talking about before I got on here. That's just where I'm at for today. Um, <laughs> and... This is a weird thing for me to talk about, but like I actually don't think I've stopped and given this a second thought until today. Well, last night and today. Um, so, for example, I had been on here several episodes back, maybe several months ago, talking about how I thought I was hearing mice or squirrels up in the attic and me and Alicia went to investigate and we didn't find anything. Um, but... As soon as we were done, like that very night, I heard 
like mice is mouse mice oh here we go again i heard like mice up there like scratching and like running around or whatever so we obviously did not see them and they're still living up there but it doesn't sound like there's a lot and we should probably do something about it but i don't want to kill them i don't want to put traps up there and kill them so um alicia's well aware that they're up there so i kind of like i'm hoping she realizes that you know, maybe she can figure it out. But anyways, so every other night I'm hearing like these mice upstairs in the attic is what I'm assuming they are because they're very light. They're not very heavy. And I have imagined four of them. I have no proof of this. I have no idea if there's one or 10. I don't know. But in my mind, four of them exist. Two are a gay couple and they have two kids And sometimes the couple fight and then one runs off to the opposite end of the attic and like has a, has a, maybe it's an autistic mouse because it has like a meltdown of some sort. It's just, it's like scratch, 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 scratch. I don't know what the fuck it's doing up there, but that's what I thought it was doing was just kind of having a little bit of a meltdown. And then sometimes dinner time is fraught with tension between this, the, these gay mice and their family. And they're working through some really hard stuff. Uh, I don't know what mice have to work through, but they're they're wor- working through it and they talk about it. And like, there's a lot of time where I don't hear anything upstairs, which means they're sleeping or they're content. And it's just the once in a while I hear like the little scuffles and then there's like two right above me, right above my recliner. And then like one will scamper off and go run to the opposite side and do some scratching. And then I still hear noise above me so I know there's at least actually yeah I do know there's at least two and I am also wondering if I make if I if do we sound gross people like gross people because we have mice in the attic and I'm just okay with letting them live there like I don't want to kill them as long as like they don't eat through the ceiling I don't really care um and I figure if Alicia was that bothered she would do something about it um so yeah I I just, yeah, that's, that's what's living up in the attic is gay mice and their kids. Um, and that was normal to me until I realized last night, I don't know how or why that I was creating, like, I do this all the time with every animal. Um, another example is if anybody watched or saw the eclipse today, that was pretty cool. I wasn't all gung ho about it. Like everybody seemed to be, that was like, I get it's a once in a lifetime experience, but I don't know. It's just, ooh, whoop de doo Like what, the moon's in front of the sun or something? That's great. It'll happen in another few hundred years, whatever. I don't care. Um, and I know that sounds like maybe, I, I don't know. I'm not ungrateful for the human experience. I just don't really, I wasn't really that excited about that experience. But uh, Alicia decided to call in to work today and she's staying next door at Janice's because Janice and her sister Nadine drove up somewhere to stay a couple of nights because they wanted to make sure that they saw the eclipse and they left yesterday so they would beat all the traffic today or whatever so alicia stayed over there last night to watch the animals and then today and then she decided to call in to work so that was great so i went over there and we sat outside on janice's um deck and it was it's a pretty cloudy day in upstate New York, um, or whatever Syracuse is, midst, I don't fucking know, I live here, but I don't know, but it was pretty cloudy, and I remember there was, like, an article saying that we would get, like, a few moments of clearance so that we could see the eclipse, so I was, like, wasn't sure that that was gonna happen, that's how cloudy it was, but then it happened, and then we still got to see some of it, and it got super dark outside, so that was really cool, was it to just be super dark in the middle of the day, I had read this article from the New York Times yesterday saying that animals may act different during something like this. And sure as shit, as soon as it got so dark out there, Janice's dog was inside and had been laying down in front of the glass sliding door the entire time we were out there. And all of a sudden, just started jumping up and down and barking. All these other dogs across the street were like bark, 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 like all at the same time. It was so cool. And then these birds, the crows, 
they were acting really fucking weird. They were in the trees. There was like 10 of them. And then like a whole bunch of other birds flocked to this one tree as the eclipse was happening. And I was sitting there creating an entire story like, okay, you know, the birds are having a meeting and they were trying to figure out what does this mean? Is this the apocalypse? Is the world coming to an end? And they must have tried to figure out some plans and half the group disagreed so they flew away from the tree and then the other half just stayed there and squawked them on themselves and they were trying to figure out like what do we do now like this is the stuff I was thinking about I do this with all animals squirrels hamsters even like fish they all have these like they don't even know I'm doing it I don't know why I don't know why my mind does this does anybody know why despite the fact that uh, there's four reasons that Mr. GPT told me about like this is very strange to me not really actually well I guess it's just strange that I'm actually aware of the fact that I do this um I I mean I do it all the time with our animals but I'm usually right in guessing their behaviors and stuff or whatever but yeah I ascribe stories to animals I wonder why that is like, I wonder if it was because when I was growing up and it wasn't very healthy in the home. Like, I remember, like, looking out the, we would, I would sit in front of the back door and, like, look outside and I would see, like, squirrels or, you know, just, like, birds and stuff. And I, I would just, I think I, I think I was doing it back then to try to dissociate in a way from, like, what was going on at home. I don't know if that's connected. That's just something I was wondering. Is that where it came from? Um, but yeah, like I do it all the time. And like, I don't know why my brain just goes into like two squirrels. Like there could be two on one side of the street and then one runs away with something in its mouth. And I just automatically think to myself, um, oh, they were fighting over that nut. And then that greedy motherfucker snatched it and ran away. And now the other one is really hungry. And like, I don't know why I do this. It's so so weird but kind of funny and I was wondering if is there anybody else that does this do you know more information about this than I do is this um something that is more prevalent among autistic individuals um can you point me in the direction of like some sort of a resource where I could like learn more about this I realized I could just go on the handy dandy internet myself and look but I am way too lazy and I have way too much to do right now so a little email would be great uh with a link or something so yeah I just wanted to get on here and say like I have d like Alicia came up I've told her this and she's like oh so we have gay mice that's where that came from I was like, we do, we do have gay mice upstairs and, you know, they're living a whole life up there. There's like a town and a community, like a community. There's like other, like, you know, I'm just going to stop because it's 13 minutes in and I kind of regret that I got on here and talked about this, but I'm not going to not publish it because then that means I wasted this time. Um, but yeah, I... I could, I literally, could, I could think of like 10 other things off the top of my head that like I do this with animals and like what kind of stories I have going on there. And like, there's some that are to be continued. Like, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know how this sounds. Um, but yeah, or like maybe during the summer, sometimes I sit out back and we have like a bird feeder and when I remember to buy bird seed at the store, I'll fill it up in the bird feeder and then I just watch the birds and sometimes there's just nobody at the feeder and this one bird flies it's just out of nowhere and it's the only one at the bird feeder and I'm just like oh have you had a hard day how far did you fly like 20 minutes of flying like are you by yourself do you have a family um how hungry are you did I just provide you with enough food to keep you alive like I don't fucking know like I do this all the time and I know I've said that 20 times already, probably, but I, I have a feeling I'm going to just think about this for like at least in the next couple of hours because um, I need to figure out where this started. And so, yeah, 
I'm a little embarrassed that I just talked about that, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and publish it. I don't know how this sounds, but I really, 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 I really need that email from somebody that says that they do this too. And any resources would be greatly appreciative. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye.